Have you ever heard the phrase, hidden in plain sight? I am my family's finder of lost articles. Whenever keys or cell phones or important documents or bill go able, I can find them. But if I need a particular tool, like a putty knife, I have to go to Frank's workshop to find it, and I become lost. His workshop is immaculate, but it is not a zone that I am familiar with, so I have trouble finding tools there. Last week, I actually needed to find that putty knife. I checked out this small box of tools that we have, because our house has been under construction, particularly our kitchen, and we're renovating the closet, so there's a box of tools right in the kitchen. And I checked that out, and I could not find that knife. We have in our basement, in our sump pump room, another small counter, and in there, there's um, the key screwdrivers, a hammer, you know, the stuff that you would need to do to any quick, small house repair, and it was not in there. And with trepidation, I went out to the garage, and I looked at those rows and rows of hangers and shelves and jars, all meticulously and carefully put away, and I could not find a putty knife. When Frank came home, he took me to where it was, and I was shocked. It was hiding in plain sight. I had been to that room. I had stood there to look for it. If that knife had been a snake, it would have risen up and bit me. We all have a snake that slithers in and out of our daily lives, and we don't even know it. Satan uses the things around us that we don't even see to tempt us away from God. Things like <clears throat> cultural norms and ideas, institutional instructions are hidden <clears throat> in plain sight. Being able to discern how the enemy tempts us is a step of growth toward becoming a mature Christian. Immediately after Jesus' baptism, during which a voice from heaven was heard saying, This is my Son, whom I love. And the Spirit was seen alighting on Jesus as a dove. He was led into the wilderness to consider all that had happened and to discern his identity and his purpose as the Son of God. We, having heard the story of his birth and his baptism and his ministry and his death and his resurrection, we often take his divinity and his understanding of his divinity for granted. When I was a child, I assumed that he just always knew that he was Christ, set apart for great things, willing to die for us with the assurance that he would rise again. As an adult, I feel more connected to his times of searching and doubting, of hesitancy. I feel connected to this wilderness retreat for this time of reflecting on the questions of who am I? What is my purpose? And can I hold on to my personal integrity and follow God's will for me while I am engaged in the activities of the world all around me? Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. 40 is a biblical symbol for enough time to discern and become changed. It took 40 years of wandering in the desert wilderness for the Israelites to become the people of God, ready to enter the promised land. Some experts say that 40 days or the six weeks of Lent is enough time for us to develop a new healthy habit. Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days at night. He had completed God's boot camp for the soul. This story of testing demonstrates his readiness for following God's kingdom 
plan for our redemption, and it also points the way to the ways that the tempter might try and pull us from our identity as children of God and our kingdom purpose. Satan, the tempter, slithered up to Jesus and hissed, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. The evil one tried to exploit Jesus in his time of weakness. Jesus was starving. Bread would have been lovely. And he tried to undermine his priorities by appealing to a sense of entitlement in order to distort his identity and separate him from God's plan. He hissed, if you are God's son, eat some bread, fly off the top of this building, use ill-gotten power to legislate mor morality and justice for all. Now bread and purpose and justice are good things. But Jesus knew that all of these must come from God, in God's time, in God's way, for God's purposes. Jesus' priority at that moment was to pray and work with God to determine the way forward. He was not swayed to give up his trust in God in order to satisfy his own needs. He fought back with scripture and he said, people won't live by bread alone, but by every word spoken by God. Our Bible is a collection of God-breathed, spirit-inspired stories of God's love and how it works in us and through us. We need bread. We need food to nourish our bodies. And we need to know the, who God is and how we fit into that grand, overarching purpose of God's kingdom. We need spiritual nourishment. We need to know that we are loved by God and that our purpose is to love God with our hearts, our souls, our minds, and our bodies and to love our neighbors as ourselves. Scripture is a resource that gives us eyes to see temptation and the guidance to resist it. Tim Chadwick, who wrote the Bible study that our Wednesday group has just completed, said, temptation begins as whispered suggestions, half-truths, or truths told as lies. They linger because they are embedded in our culture. So, personal confession time. I'm going to give you two examples of some temptations that have at some time pulled me away for God's purpose. Both are based on distorted truths. First, Colin Powell once said, there are no secrets to success. It is the result of preparation, hard work, and learning from our failure. And Abraham Lincoln said, things may come to those who wait, but only the things left by those who hustle. I believe in working hard. Organization and hard work are part of my identity. But they're part of my identity to the point that I don't rest well. Probably because I'm afraid of falling behind or not meeting people's expectations or not being able to lead this church so that it is a healthy, vital group of people that transforms lives and makes the community a better place. I'm easily caught up in a culture of production and achievement, but even God rested. God created the world and then took a day off to rest, so who am I to think that the health of this congregation rests on me alone? There are other skilled leaders in this congregation. And you know, my body, mind, and soul cannot run on empty. I need Sabbath time with God. Jesus said, 
Come to me, all of you, and I will give you rest. A divinely inspired psalmist wrote, Be still and know that I am God. I can fall to the temptation of overwork. On the flip side is the temptation of entitlement. For example, I have worked hard, really hard, for all that I have, and I am entitled to use it as I want. Others should be responsible. They should be doing their own hard work and take care of themselves and their own situations. I don't need to help them. But you know what? In reality, God has sent the people, the resources, the inspiration, and the power that has allowed me to be who I am and have what I have. It is all a gift from God given to me so that I can be a blessing to others. Avoiding either of these pitfalls requires seeing the temptation that is hiding in plain sight. Chaddock reminds us, each time you choose truth in the face of a lie, you flex a muscle that strengthens your character and launches you deeper into life of the spirit. Facing and overcoming temptation prepares us for the really tough stuff of life. As Dr. Martin Luther King noted, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort or convenience, but where he stands in moments of challenge and controversy. So this is what I want you to do. Over the next six weeks, use your Lenten discipline. Whatever exercise you've decided to do, to increase your knowledge of scripture and strengthen your relationship with God. So that when the tempter, tempter slithers over to you with whispers of indifference towards those who are less fortunate than you, you will remember Jesus saying, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did to the least of these, you did for me. Don't be afraid to speak scripture out loud, boldly and directly to make plain your defense and flex your discipleship muscles. And if you are confused, or actually when you are confused or unsure of what is placed before you is either truth or lie, remember Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but have the light of light. Look for Christ's light illuminating the way past temptation and go forth. Amen.